Welcome back to Velvety Cleopatra. That is me. My actual name is Gemma though. You can call me Gem or Velvy or Cleo. I don't mind. Just call me. <laughs> Does that line actually work on anyone for God's sake? Anyway, I, I, I apologise. Today we're doing something a little bit different because I am very pushed for time at the moment and I haven't had a great deal of time for sewing. I am working on a project but it's not going to be done in time and I wanted to bring a video to you. I'm trying to upload once every two weeks. I was trying for once a week but that was getting a bit too much. So yeah, once every two weeks and as always I appreciate you joining me here today. But today is a little bit different. So I thought I would show you some of the things that I have made and kind of talk to you a little bit about my sewing journey. So I will show you a few of the garments I've made quite a few of the garments I've made and just tell you about my favourite patterns, my favourite fabrics um, and how I started sewing. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this little introduction to the sewing me. There are many facets to my personality and this is just one of them so maybe you'll get to know a bit more about the others eventually if you want to. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Firstly, I'll just explain. I learned to sew about three years ago now. Um, it was during the lockdown. I think that was about three years ago, wasn't it? So I'd had a sewing machine for years and I hadn't even taken it out of the box. I bought it from Hobbycraft. It was just a little um, genome cheap one. It was about £100 and I hadn't sewn anything apart from a couple of quilts. So I started sewing garments in the lockdown, but I started sewing quilts um, just before. So I made a t-shirt quilt for a friend um, out of some old like band t-shirts and things. And then I made a couple of other little projects. So I did a couple of other quilts using fat quarters. And I really enjoyed that because I was kind of just getting to grips with sewing in a straight line, um, learning how to, you know, handle the fabric and things. And I didn't have a lot of supplies. So I just had a rotary cutter, a mat, a self healing mat and my sewing machine and I just went at it and I made some really cute quilts actually I'll, I'll pop some pictures in to show you some of the quilts that I made <laughs> Had old fashioned ways, but with the times I'm going to move, you must do nowadays. A young man in a draper shop, I called in up the whip. So then during lockdown, I decided I wanted to try and learn how to make my own clothes. And just before lockdown, I had actually signed up to a sewing class locally, but I wasn't really getting a lot out of it because there were about, I would say there was probably about 15 of us in the class and there was only one teacher. And we were all sewing different projects and she couldn't get round to all of us. I decided that I wanted to try and make a copy of a dress that I already owned because the company that makes it, Lindy Bop, they'd gone into administration. They don't exist anymore. And I was very upset because I loved that dress and I thought, I'm sure I could try and copy this and make a version myself. So I started creating a pattern from the garment in the classes that I was going to but I didn't get that finished and I stopped going to the class because I just wasn't getting anything out of it um, and then during lockdown I picked it up again I carried on making the pattern and then I made a mock-up of the dress out of some cheap jersey fabric and it came out really well and I was really happy so this is the dress I was trying to copy it's like a halter dress so let me just hold it up so um, I'm not going to try everything on because it's really hot and I'll get really sweaty and uh, I don't want you to see me like that. <laughs> but this is the dress, so it's like a cute halter neck, just ignore the uh, the coat hanger. And it's got like a frill on the bottom and this is a fruit print, you know, I love a fruit print. Anyway, I'll um, I'll pop a picture in of what it looks like when it's on. But I decided to make a copy of that. And once I'd made the blue version, I decided to move on to the fabric that I'd chosen for the final version, 
which is this white polka dot Liverpool fabric. I absolutely love Liverpool fabric. I'm wearing it right now and yeah it just this dress so it's got the the frill on the bottom it's a halter neck you know I sewed it on my normal sewing machine it's not overlocked or anything inside but this dress fits me like a freaking glove it makes my body look just like oh chef's kiss like I'll put a picture in to show you Anyway, when I wore that, I felt amazing. And I had never felt so amazing in a piece of clothing before. Certainly nothing I'd ever bought from a shop before. And I was just like, I have to make more. So I made quite a few of that dress to begin with because I was just on a high at how it made my body look so good. And I was really struggling with my body confidence at that point, as in I had zero. So... <laughs> Yeah, this is how sewing helped me find my confidence, people. But yeah, so I made a few. So I made this one in this lovely Liverpool fabric again, like a lemony yellow with like a, a I, th I don't know what kind of flower they are, but they're just pink. Like I would never think this colour would suit me, but I absolutely love that dress. Um, that dress is not on a hanger because I recently repaired it. So it's split across the, the seam here. So I went at it with the overlocker because bearing in mind, I'd only just started sewing garments and I wasn't that great at, you know, sewing effectively. <laughs> so I also made this pink version in this again is Liverpool and it's got flamingos on. I love me a flamingo, anything with flamingos on, I love. And I made a leopard print version in Jersey as well. I also made a black polka dot version, but I recently chopped that. It didn't have a frill on the bottom and I chopped it off. I chopped it off to like this kind of length and just had it as a halter top. And then I used the bottom half to attach to the starstruck bodice that I made um, in last week's video, the mock-up, because I wanted to finish it. So now I have a starstruck top and the dress. Um, but yeah, I used the polka dot one of these because I just didn't, I didn't reach for that as much as the others. The ones in the Liverpool fabric and the leopard print one, the leopard print ones are my favourites, I have to say. I do really love all of these dresses and it was such a learning experience making these. So after those successes, I moved on to something else. So I again started um, making, because I didn't have any sewing patterns at this point and I didn't know how to follow a sewing pattern. So I looked up tutorials on YouTube and I found a tutorial, I think it was by Comicat Creations, I wanna say. I'll link it below, but to make a turtleneck dress using a long sleeve t-shirt as a pattern, like a long sleeve t-shirt that fit you well. And I made three of these. So I've got this gray checked one. I've got this red and black checked one. Do you see a pattern here? I do like a check. And then I got, I made this, this like hot pink and white houndstooth version and I love these so much they just again they hugged my body perfectly they made me feel really feminine and really curvy and like made me love my body And yeah, so I had a bit of a, a thing about making these for a while. And um, then it started, the weather started to get warm again. So I decided to move on to some summer sewing. So after those, I decided to try and make a wrap dress. Again, not using a pattern. And same YouTube channels I used to make the turtleneck dresses had a tutorial for making a wrap dress with, I think it had a high-low hem, which is not me. I'm not into that. Um, but I decided to have a go at making a wrap dress using, again, that same well-fitted t-shirt as a pattern. And that's that's how I made the white, um, the white wrap dress with the purple flowers on. I'll put a picture in for you here. And again, that dress made me feel just 
chef's kiss i was like rocking that dress and i just i fell in love with sewing completely i just thought i have to make all of the things and i decided to branch out from that particular youtube channel and try again not a pattern but it was something a little bit more challenging so let me show you so i decided to follow the by hand london tutorial to make a sheared dress now i saw this on um i saw a few sheared dresses including um there was a couple of videos on youtube i was watching where people were wearing sheared dresses and i thought i'm gonna give it a go so i got this cute daisy print poly cotton this is from minerva um and i had a go at making this and it's got it's roughly it's really long it's like a maxi it's got tears the whole bodice is sheared my first go at shearing and look i was really proud of that <laughs> um little tip a little pointer here i keep my genome sewing machine my old one because it does shearing perfectly and i can machine wind the elastic on the bobbin i don't have to do it by hand i will never get rid of that machine for that reason alone because i'm not going to stand i'm not going to sit there and hand wind elastic on a bobbin i've tried to do shearing on my brother machine so many times and i cannot get it to do it properly the genome perfection <laughs> but yeah i'll put a picture of me wearing this because it's not my usual style and i'm still on the fence about whether i want to keep this but i just i can't bring myself to get rid of it i just keep thinking like on holiday somewhere this would be really cute so can somebody take me on holiday please because i have so many clothes and nowhere to wear them so fast forward to christmas and i made this self-drafted um this is made from uh, scuba twill a self-drafted dress so again i used that t-shirt as a, a model for the as like a template for the bodice and then i added a half circle skirt i think it's a half circle yeah a half circle skirt and made a little belt for this um and I love this at Christmas. It was so cute. I actually wore it the Christmas afterwards as well because I loved it so much. But yeah, this was, um, again, this is very badly sewn. The, I can see the stitching is sort of like laddering. I don't know if you can see that. You can see the stitching basically, which is not great. So I think I need to go over this with the overlocker and sort that out. But I love this dress. Again, I love the way it looked on me and it made me feel really cute and kind of vintagey and i was like oh, i can make vintage i can make vintage style clothes now i can make retro style clothes now i was so excited and then guess what happened i couldn't find any patterns for vintage or retro style clothes in my size and i was so disappointed i was really disappointed and i joined the charm patterns patreon because i saw that their patterns were just really cute and I was thinking, oh, I'll, I'll learn how to grade them up. Um, and then eventually there was a couple of patterns that came out in a knit fabric that I tried. And they were quite simple. So it was the charm patterns, the Barbie, the Barbie top and the skipper um, dress. And it's also like a bodysuit, I think. So I tried those and because they were stretchy, they fit me. So I made a couple of those. I'm not going to show you them because they're a bit boring. Anyway, I waited and waited and waited for charm patterns to increase their sizing. And while I was waiting, I dabbled with a few other sewing patterns. And a couple of them have, I've, I've liked, but most of them just didn't really, they didn't really like fit what I was looking for. So I made a couple of the, um, and this company name has just completely gone out of my head now. What on earth? LOD wrap dress, closet core patterns, the LOD wrap dress. So I made this one, this is a crepe de chine. I'll put pictures in. And then this one is a viscous from Minerva, which I made much later when I became a brand ambassador for Minerva. Um, I love both of these and some are very comfortable. This is one of my favorite patterns. I absolutely love them and they have pockets thank you yes they have pockets but yeah absolutely love this pattern i will link all the patterns i've mentioned 
below by the way um in the in the comments in the description so if anybody wants to try them they can but yeah that's one of my favorites i do love the closet core elegy wrap dress even though the fact that i couldn't remember the name of them let me just put these over here even though the fact that I couldn't remember the name of them makes it seem like I'm not interested in them, I love it and I will probably make some more of those. I also had a go at this one, which was the... <sighs> Why are these names going out of my head the minute I pick up the garment? The Tempo Sundress. I know it's called the Tempo Sundress and that is by... Why can't I remember? Let me just check. <laughs> it's the Tempo Sundress by Love Notions. I can't believe I forgot that. Anyway, I call this my Edgar Allan Poe dress because look at the fabric. Oh, it's like eyeballs in roses and like ravens. That's why I call it my Edgar Allan Poe dress. So it's kind of like Halloween, but in summer. And this again, it's like a, just a f kind of, it's got a, a tear, like a, a gathered slightly gathered tier on the bottom very comfortable to wear and this is made from a i think this was a poly cotton it could be a cotton poplin cotton poplin from minerva um i made this a couple of summers ago not my favorite dress pattern but i do love the fabric so i just think it doesn't fit me very well and i probably need to take it in on the bodice a little bit because i like quite figure hug hugging clothes you may have noticed and this is not this is more like loose and flowy bohemian goddess and I'm not sure I can pull that off. But I, I will wear it. Again, this would be a fab holiday dress. So then, finally, Charm Patterns up, updated their sizing to a larger size that would fit me. And I started sewing all of the Joan dresses because <laughs> this dress again this is another one that like off the shoulder so i'm wearing the top version of it today i just love it sweetheart neckline off the shoulder there's also a slash neck version i think i've made nearly 30 garments from this pattern tops and dresses because i just love it so much i will insert a montage of me wearing all of my jones to show you there's a lot I was lovely, but a trifle overdressed. He jawed and jawed for half an hour on Fashion's latest weed, and kidded me to spin my hard-earned cash into a sea. Summer blouses, summer blouses. They tell me that they're great, so I must be up to date from the houses. I'll display my lovely form. They say they're cool, but I think they're very warm. So although I have had a lengthy and involved love affair with the Joan dress, I have made quite a few other charm patterns and I have to say they are my favourite patterns just because they're the aesthetic I love. They go up to my size, they're easy to follow and you get quite a lot of different options with each of the patterns. I find they fit me pretty well. Um, if it's a woven, I normally have to raise the bust apex a bit. And obviously grade between sizes because I'm a few different sizes but with the knit ones I can make a couple of sizes smaller and they tend to fit me really really well I get that figure hugging look that I'm going for love them but I made a few other charm patterns so I made the cute charm scout capelet with piping look at this it's so cute and it's got like a, a satin lining oh god chef's kiss <clears throat> aggressive chef's kiss and I made the little matching hat to go with it so cute and when I put this on I felt like a vintage goddess I absolutely loved this so much so the charm capelet was my first foray into sewing outerwear and wool um, since then I also made three of the Vogue V, I think it's V9288 capes. You've probably seen me wearing this in one of my little shorts. I'll post some pictures, but I've made this burgundy one. I love this pattern so much. I made a grey checked one and I made a bottle green one with silver buttons. Ha! Oh, this pattern 
is just a retro dream. I love it so much. I absolutely love it. And it's actually really easy. So I would recommend this to fairly new sewers if you haven't made one of these and you like the look then get on it honestly it's quite an easy pattern and i made the largest size but actually i think i could get away with making a smaller size on the shoulders and i'm outside of the size range of this pattern but because it's a cape it's very forgiving absolute love 100 percent one of my favorite patterns So a couple of other charm patterns I've made, I've made the Mariner dress, so these are two. I wore this one to Goodwood Revival, so this is a, um, it's a cotton poplin from Minerva. And then this one is my Advent Countdown to Christmas dress. Um, again, this fabric is from Minerva, I think this is just a poly cotton, but how cute is it? Like an Advent calendar. I'll put some pictures of me wearing these. They're not my favourite dresses, I have to say. I think I really do prefer the knit dresses. I just can't get the wovens to fit me the way I want them to. I want a fitted dress. I like a wiggle dress. I like a pencil skirt. And I'm not ready to tackle fitting that on my body just yet. I want to make a sloper so that I can make all the vintage style wiggle dresses in woven fabrics. But I lack the skills at the moment. But I'm getting there. And another one of my favourite patterns is the Cashmereette Club Rockwell dress. And you know I've made a few of these. These are just two of them. Um, the other one is in the wash because I wore it recently. I love this dress. Love, love, love. Again, super simple. You do have to sign up for the Cashmereette Club to get the pattern. You can pay on a monthly basis. So I think you could sign up, get the pattern and leave if you really wanted to do that. Um, I do think it's good value for money. You get a lot of patterns. You get a lot of fitting advice um, and resources so I do recommend that um, I was gifted a club subscription as a, a way of as a thank you for sort of sewing these up and, and posting about them um, but I would recommend it anyway I would not tell you I thought it was good if I thought it was rubbish I am not here to lie to you people we are friends after all but yeah, this is absolutely one of my favourite patterns and these are viscous chalet fabrics from Minerva and you know how I feel about them. They're just absolutely stunning, gorgeous to work with, gorgeous and airy in the summer, 100% recommend. So that's just a little bit of background into how I started sewing and where what's brought me up to the point I'm at today which is really trying to find my vintage and retro inspired style and fill my wardrobe with vintage and retro inspired pieces that are practical but also make me feel like a goddess so I'm getting there <sighs> anyway thank you for joining me on this bit of a whirlwind kind of tour of my closet I guess um i will be back with another sewing pattern another sewing video soon i'm working on one of my other favorite patterns and i'm not going to tell you about it right now because it's it going to be in that video and i want it to be a i want it to be a surprise <laughs> um it's velvet just a little like teaser for you of course anyway please do like my video and leave me a comment let me know what you think what are some of your favorite patterns have you tried any of the patterns that i've sewn what do you like about them um and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe i'd love to have you here with me and thank you to everyone who has already subscribed it means so much to me that you're here with me each time i post the support i've had from you has been phenomenal and I put off making a YouTube channel for so long because I thought it would be a failure and you guys are just I love you all you're amazing you're all chef's kiss anyway ta-ta for now I can't believe I said that I'm yeah, sorry just to see a mother wants to strain the Sunday green to make them come in useful there are lots of ways and means for instance, when our Jimmy goes out speaking with a pin, they'll do the stick upon his rod to catch the tiddlers in. Old Mother Eve, she didn't care a fee for none of these.
When she wanted costumes, all she did was shake the tree. 